Hello YouTube, back out here at the carport garage today. I don't know if you guys watch the shorts or not, but that one ran on this weekend. I got a manual boost controller and 13 pound springs in the uh, waste gates. And with the manual boost controller all the way negative on boost, it ran a 10.7. Manual boost controller screwed all the way out to max boost which isn't really max boost. They ran a 10-4, and then I unhooked the waste gates, so no pressure was trying to help the waste gates, and it ran a 9-9 at 132, I believe, if I remember correctly. But this one right here is what we're working on today. Um, oh, I was going to say, Carburetor and fuel injection. I've had less problems out of this car than the fuel injection car. That fuel injection, all it does is add, it just adds more stuff that can go wrong in my opinion. And honestly, I think a carburetor car performs better. At wide open throttle, now not at cruise and, you know, red light to red light, fuel injection is going to do better there for sure. But... It is kind of a pain to pull the fuel bowls off, break out the timing light, unscrew the distributor, turn the distributor to do timing, whereas on the fuel injection car, you just hit a couple buttons and load a tune. But anyway, I thought I'd just throw that two cents in there. But again, on one of the shorts, I mentioned that uh, it's probably just the header gasket on this thing. I kind of feel stupid to even say that, and why we didn't check that is beyond me. Because we've actually had some of these bolts back out on us. And even when they backed out on us, though, we didn't have that noise. I think we just jumped straight to that because this motor's old. And it's been abused. <coughs> it's been overheated. It, it's had passes made on it with antifreeze and the oil. And I guess that's why we jumped straight to that. But Rookie mistake. We should have checked that. We should have known that. We didn't know that. Why we didn't check it's beyond me. I don't know, but we're going to put a new uh, new gasket on it and see what it does. This uh, this car calls for the uh, the heads, Pro Max 200 CC heads. They call for the uh, Frel Pro 1404. Advance actually had them on stock in stock. Advance Auto Parts actually had them on stock on sale, but here's what we had before. That header gasket was shot, and that is exactly where the sound was coming from. And when I first heard it, I was like, that's an exhaust leak. Why, and why we didn't check it even after I had thought that's beyond me, but I don't know. Just stupidity. Eh, we all make mistakes, I guess, but hopefully that's it. The motor still has to come out of this thing. It's got way more blow by than I like. And the oil pressure is jumping around. But the oil pressure seemed to start doing that when we put the turbo in. You got that turbo oil feed line and, and it's squirting oil through the turbo. So that might have something to do with that. But it's getting time. It's like four years old. There's hundreds of passes on it. So it's getting time that we need to go through it. Put a hone on it. New rings and bearings at least. So it'll survive another four years, hopefully. Everybody said these stock blocks, they won't hold as much power as we're already putting through it. And I mean, we've hit it with... Chris don't race on motor hardly ever. When Like mine, when it was nitrous, I raced on motor more than I raced on nitrous. But Chris races this thing. He either It was either getting sprayed or it was got this turbo on it. I think he only ran it a, a very small few times on motor. I mean, any time we've made a pass down the drag strip, it was on a power adder. But uh, let's put this header gasket on here. See if it fixes it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it will. Which is cool because there's a couple more races Chris wants to go to. And um, since I cannot get my scanner to read right on my, on my car... We're going to take that one to the dyno next Saturday. So y'all get a, a video of that. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and call it right now the way it's setting right now with it running that 99 pass the car weighs about 35 50 but we put the turbo and everything on it I don't know it's it's got a full tank of gas so it's probably more around 3600 but uh um I'd say it's probably about 650 wheel horsepower hey look Willis come over to see us there you are Willis was having a problem with his car. His, his tack would start acting up at around four or 5,000 RPM. And, uh, and then the car would start cutting out around those RPMs. Oh, it didn't go far enough. But, uh, I told him, I said, let's try to change that, uh, the distributor and he had an extra distributor yeah i made a test it on the way over here and it's running fine great smooth as smooth as can be so i should have made some videos of that last night but uh we uh we changed his distributor last night he had an old distributor sitting in a what was it uh 350 oh 350 i had so the module in the distributor or something or something or something was bad. The magnetic pickup, I don't know. Something was bad in his distributor. We switched all that out. And it fixed it. So that's awesome. I checked my... The little peep sights on the... I think I need to put a little more gas in the float bowls. are down about maybe a quarter of the way in the peep holes. No. That should be about half, shouldn't it? Yeah, but a quarter away won't hurt it. Yeah. Other than that, it's, it's running good this morning. Sweet. We had changed the spark plug wire, so I'm assuming that's what he's doing. He's going to put his spark plug wire back on because we we thought that may have been the issue, but it was not. But uh, I also was going to adjust the <coughs> gas up, but I can do that later. I was going to put just a little more gas in the bowls, but I can do that later on. We can do that now if you want. It's not a big deal. It doesn't take a second. Well, I'll need to screw over in a 5 8 inch. I need to check it again, though. It was it been setting for a little bit when I looked at it last night. Yeah. To... You got the clear sight bowls? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, we don't have those on, those on this one. That sucks. And what Willis is talking about is on a carburetor on your fuel bowls you want to set your level in the fuel bowls and usually you unscrew that and you screw that screw and it moves the level but anyway you want it about halfway well on them it's got the screws like that but his is clear yeah mine's clear but on so. the ones with the screws you take the screw out and you fill it up to where when you just like rock the car a little bit it it'll, comes out it'll spew out a little bit yeah if you can't rock the car and get it to come out then you need to put a little more in it but yeah the clear sight bowls work better you can see where it's at in the window but yeah all right will this help me get the header on Rocker arms are kind of loud because I just kind of threw all that back on there. I didn't really set them. I just kind of threw them on there. But yeah. Rookie mistake. It was just a uh, exhaust leak, and that that would definitely affect the power because you know most of the boost is going out between that. Most of the pressure for the turbo was going out between the head and the exhaust. Yeah. You'll live to run another day. We're still going to take it apart um, this winter and go through it. But uh, yeah, we'll get a couple more races in it this uh, this fall. Before we do that, though, good deal. Awesome. Well, I drove it around, got on it. Feels strong. 
Uh, that noise ain't there no more. So yeah, that's a header gasket. Why we didn't check that is beyond me. Kind of feel stupid now, but a uh, rookie mistake is what it is. But it's good news. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that'll conclude this video. But uh, next, uh, well, this coming Saturday, where my scanner don't want to read right on the. 96 Camaro we're gonna put it on the dyno and get that timing and AFR dialed in just right and uh, See if we can't get a little bit more out of that car besides uh, I Want to know what it puts down. I'm, I'm gonna guess around 650 wheel. I don't know how much boost it's making The me bay wastegates It's not a It's not doing like it's supposed to like from my understanding like a seven pound springs Supposed to give you seven pounds when boost pressure is going to the wastegate, and then 14 when no boost pressure is going to the wastegate. But my seven pound spring, it only went from four to eight. Four turn with boost pressure going to the wastegates, and then eight with no pressure going to the wastegates. But um, I'm gonna let this uh, Trans Am cool down, and I'm gonna do the other side because. Those are cheap eBay forward facing headers, and they came with obviously a really cheap gasket. And these Felpro gaskets, they were on sale at Advance. They were only 20 bucks, but they're a real good gasket. I like to use them multi layer ones, and they did have some in there, but they had Mr. Gasket brand. I like to use the Percy's brand, but them heads use square port gaskets. But uh, Felpro's work just, just almost as good as the Percy's. I think the Percy's work the best. But but I'll not bore y'all with that. Um, video will probably be, uh, I'll probably do some videos uh, critiquing the, uh, the surge tank and my, um, and my up radiator mount, or upper alternator mount, which I'm very happy with because I twisted the crap out of this car to run that nine and that belt didn't flinch it didn't flinch and used to before on the stock setup when i rubbed it that far for some reason it would jump off the pulleys like one rib and it would just stay there and then i'd put it back later but it didn't even do that it stayed right where it's supposed to be so it's working better than it was before but um yeah y'all like and subscribe have a great day and uh We'll get some more race videos. Um, I'm going to hit a couple of index races, and Chris is going to come down for some, maybe another back-of-the-track race at I-64 and see what we can't do.